How's it going DFS golf fans or just golf fans or maybe a little bit of both? I guess there is some crossover between PGA DFS and regular old golf fans or else probably most people wouldn't be interested. Although I'm sure there's also a segment of the population that just likes PGA DFS and will never be seen on the golf course. I try to talk to everybody, all those that like the game. So thank you for coming and joining one of my PGA DFS top five videos here for the Osmo YouTube channel. This one is the sleeper portion of the Genesis Invitational Top 5 PGA DFS Sleepers for the Genesis Invitational. And we've got such a stacked field here this week that some of these names that I'm going to mention here in this sleeper category certainly are not sleeper names by any stretch. Some of the best players in the world. But how I make up this video, it's simple. If they've got under 10 at or under 10% owned, projected by Osmo, then they can be considered a sleeper, at least in my eyes. That's how I look at it. If you get into single-digit ownerships, no matter where you're priced, certainly you can be considered a sleeper in that realm. Again, these guys aren't sleepers by any stretch, or most of them aren't some of the biggest names. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We're going to go backwards to front. One of my lowest-priced sleepers, I'll say, of the week is Joel Damon. Finally, we got a break last week. He had started the year off with a couple of missed cuts, but... A couple of weeks ago, we shot six under on Friday to miss the cut on the number at, I believe it was the Farmers or Waste Management. Then come back next week. Finally, we got through the cut, coming in 60th. Now things are trending the right way. We had a fifth place finish here last year. I like Joel Damon's spot, coming in 6,901% owned. Again, things are trending in the right direction for him. When we look at his strokes gain numbers earlier this season, off the tee hasn't been a problem. It's been his approaches, 150th, around the green, 142, and putting 128th. So look for a break here this week for Joel Damon. Next guy, I would say my second sleeper, not my or my fourth best sleeper. We'll go with fourth best. We'll go that way with it. Is Will Zalatoris. And listen, here's a guy that hasn't missed a cut in a while. Now his price is much cheaper, maybe back to where it was at the Farmers a couple of weeks ago. And I think this golf course should set up really well for him. He's a guy that doesn't lose strokes off the tee. He just doesn't do it very rarely. And if he goes out and does that again this week, he's going to set himself in good position to take advantage of his ninth rate strokes gain on approach ranking. Sorry, that was a little mouthful there. I think I might have read it a little backwards. Anyways, you get the point. Extremely good with his ball striking. Round the green, 68th and 107th putting. Certainly won't need to hole as many putts here this week for birdie to contend. So Wills Altorius, only 6% owned projected this week. I like him as that mid-price sleeper. Okay, now my three best sleepers on the slate. Three huge names in the game of golf, obviously. All projected under 10% owned this week. How about that? First one, obviously, Jordan Spieth. Okay, we know after the last two weeks that... Many more people at 9,200 are going to play him than they were going to a couple of weeks ago. That's for sure. If he was 9,200 before these two top fives, he'd probably be less than 1% owned. But the form certainly seems like it's coming around. So at 9,200, we've got about 8% of the people projected go into him. Still, to me, that's considered a sleeper. Easy enough for me in a sense where I still like Spieth. He's yet to miss a cut here in, in quite some time. I know his finishes may not be fantastic, 59 and 51st in the last two years. But again, he hasn't. He also hasn't missed a cut since 2016. It was his only missed cut uh, prior to that. In 2012, he started, but it was a long time ago couple of top 10s in there, a couple of uh, four top 25s. So still does like the course. Enough for me to give him at least 2x at 8% owned. I think it's fairly easy to do that. So look for Spieth, who is improving his off-the-tee numbers. He's gone up from 245th to 207th. He's gone up on his approaches over the last two weeks from like 160th to inside the top 100. His around the green game is obviously superb. He's ranked in the top 10. And then putting, improving, ranked 83rd. Okay, my second best sleeper of the week. We're going to mix it up just a little bit and go Justin Thomas. Okay, $10,700 with varied course history. He's a guy that came in second here once before last year. Or, I'm sorry, two years ago, but missed the cut last year. Had a ninth before that, but then three pretty mediocre starts to at Riviera. Excuse me, that's where we're playing. At Riviera prior to the two top tens. So, a little varied course history, and I think that people possibly just don't want to pay that much for him given his varied course history when you've got somebody like Dustin Johnson, the highest price golfer in the field, that, you know, he's had incredible amount of top 10, six of them since 2014 with no missed cuts. 
McIlroy there as well. So I think you can actually throw Justin Thomas in the sleeper category this week. Short gain numbers in uh, off the tee has got to improve. 67th, 15 on the approach, 17 around the green, and 19 putting. So a very well-balanced game. Okay, now my top sleeper of the week, when they printed out these salaries, I knew he was going to be less than 5% owned. And at less than 5% owned, there's no way I'm not going to play Colin Morikawa this week. 9,500 salary, 4% projected owned. That's totally fine with me. 26th in his only start here. Uh, last year, and he's had quite a bit of rest after playing uh, the first three or four weeks of the season between the PGA Tour and the European Tour. He's had a couple of week rest, now back near his home. I'm sure he's played this course plenty of times before, so Colin Morikawa, under 5% owned, absolutely love this spot for him as my top DFS sleeper pick of the week for the Genesis Invitational. Goal versus strokes gain numbers, 104th off the tee, 7th on the approach. Wow, around the green, 30th and 190th putting, so... Let's go ahead and go 5-1 to one really quickly as we sum it up. Joel Damon, number 5. Will Zalatoris, number 4. Jordan Spieth, number 3. Justin Thomas, number 2. And the number 1 sleeper pick of the week is Colin Morikawa. So thanks all for joining one of my short-form PGA DFS top 5 videos of the week. Of course, we still got my top 5 fades to come. That'll probably be out tomorrow. I got to do some silly dental work, so I'm probably going to look like a little bit of a chipmunk or more of a chipmunk than I already look like with this crazy afro hair going on. So I will save you all. Uh, well, maybe you guys would have laughed if I do it, but I guess I'll save myself the embarrassment and I'll come out with that tomorrow morning instead of pushing it. So it is Tuesday morning for me here. You're probably watching this sometime Tuesday afternoon. Again, thank you for joining. Make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Make sure you get notified when these come live. So until next time, everybody, thanks for joining, and we will see you on the other side. Cheers.